I'm going to talk about the fuzzy inference system and then uh, in this section I'm going to talk about the fuzzy logic that is about the introduction uh, about what fuzzy logic it is and then uh, so that uh, we can uh, get some idea about fuzzy logic and then uh, we will go through what the fuzzy inference system it is and now we will just find out that uh, as human, we can solve a lot of complex problems. For example, when we are going to do the driving, and then for example, this is my car I'm driving uh, in between the front and the car at the back. I would like to keep a safety um, distance. So I would like to check the distance with the front car as well as the one at the back. And then I'm going to determine how much force I'm going to ask. I'm going to apply to the pedal acceleration pedal or the brake pedal in order to keep a safe distance and then later on in our daily life we have to for example to grab a bottle and then to say we can easily do that no matter the texture of the bottle the size of the bottle the distance of the bottle and then to, so for these kind of tasks we will find out that there are a lot of in position as well as as uncertainty that means we do not know exactly the distance between cars we do not know exactly the distance between bottle and then another one that is when we walk ro ro home and then so say we are going to pass some obstacle and then so this time maybe we are going to use this path next time we are going to use different path but anyway no matter what the environment change we can still get the task done yeah say the distance between cars can be different. This enrollment because of the light intensity, because of the bottle size, because of the texture of the bottle, and then so no matter what, we can get the work done. Yeah. So how do we handle in precision as well as uncertainty? And then so how do we make use of this in precise information to get the work done? And then so that is something the fuzzy inference system can do. Now, I'm going to talk about the fuzzy logic. The fuzzy logic that is, um, in general, the broad idea that is the theory of the fuzzy set, which is going to deal with this kind of uncertainty. Yeah. Okay. And now, just a few examples from these diagrams are from the MATLAB web page. And then, so, for example, if we would like to define the day of the week. If we are going to use the classical set, that means we only have zero and one, no other things, either zero or one, either belongs to the week or it is not. Yeah. So Monday, Thursday, Saturday, and uh, the day of the week, that is within this boundary. And then, uh, but in our daily life, and then uh, when, for example, when we ask whether today that is the day of the weekend, different people may have different meaning about that. For example, um, Sometimes, actually, to our understanding, Saturday and Sunday, they belong to the weekend. But what about Friday? Because when at the end of the Friday, the feeling is different from um, in the morning of the Friday. Because after the work, and then so we feel that so we gradually get into the weekend. So Friday, sometimes we will feel that or we define that that is partly it depend it, it belongs to weekend partly it is not yeah so that is about the fuzzy set so what i want to mention that is for fuzzy set that is not something either zero or one it is something in the range from zero to one yeah okay and now that is something i would like to point out that is when we use the membership function we can handle this uncertainty for example um, we have two types of membership functions the first one that is the descript type for example um, ask the same question that is when we use the binary set and then the day of the weekend if we are going to talk about the, the, the date say thursday friday saturday sunday monday so assume that that is the 24 hour long that is for the whole day and then so binary set that is thursday friday they belong to zero that is the y axis right here for saturday that is one it means that it definitely belongs to weekend the same applies to sunday and then monday but now 
when we talk about the fuzzy set using the multi-valued membership that is the fuzzy set and then thursday we already have some feeling about the weekend because we expect that one day after that will be the weekend friday we have more stronger week feeling so the weakness right here that is higher and then getting higher until we reach the highest uh, where it won as saturday and then on sunday because uh, we expect that the next day that would be um the working day again so the feeling or the weakness that is dropping yeah so for example this one may be 0 0.9 and then when we get to monday gradually we get to zero so monday belongs to uh one yeah so when we talk about the continuous membership function um so we have the same the same definition that is instead of talking about one discrete value we are going to have continuous value right here so this is the first day 24 hours this is the five day 24 hours so that means when the time passed by right here and then so we get to this point Friday uh, midnight and then Saturday morning and then suddenly we will have the weekend as the great jumps from zero to one so that is this region but anyway we only have zero or one now now this is the multi-valued membership yeah so instead of having two values we are going to have multiple value that is something in between zero to one so we will have a feeling um of weakness starting uh, start increasing from Thursday so that we are going to get a stronger and stronger feeling of weakness and then because Thursday is closer to Friday and then Friday is closer to second uh, Saturday that means Thursday Friday they are gradually from this direction it is getting closer to the weekend and then so after Saturday maybe sometimes in the afternoon in the evening the weakness that is dropping from one to and then approach zero yeah okay so this is the um idea about the membership function so when we talk about membership function that is not just one membership function sometimes we can have multiple membership function for example in this axis this is the uh, the time of the year using um, using the binary set that means we are talking about this region that is about spring this region that is about uh, summer this region that is fall and then this region that is winter okay again either one or zero when we use the binary set but when we use the membership function we can just have a multiple continuous membership function right here of course you can use the discrete membership function as well and now this region that is about spring that means when we are talking about at in mid march and then so we have the degree of membership function that is 0 0.6 so we can use all this kind of membership function to tell you whether this time how much it belongs to spring how much it belongs to summer fall and winter uh, if we are going to talk about the summer the winter and then the fall the value right here that is zero it means that at this point of the time definitely it does not belong to summer fall and winter but when we are going to move from this point toward this direction and then say right here draw a line and then so now September mid September we have defined the four the membership grade right here say that is 0 0.9 that is 90 percent it belongs to four and then so we still have some feeling about summer for example 0 0.1 definitely it is not spring or winter yeah so we can use the membership function to define um, some terms and then uh, so that we can use this membership function to do the reasoning and then uh, the most important thing that is we can use this membership function to represent in precise uncertain information so that we can come up with a rule base to represent the common sense as well as expert knowledge so that we can achieve all these tasks okay and now I'm going to talk about the fuzzy inference system in particular.
that is the working principle of the fuzzy inference system. And now, a fuzzy inference system, actually, we can define that that is a computing framework. That is, we are going to have a structure based on the concept of the fuzzy set theorem. And then so that we can represent the knowledge in linguistic form using the if then format. That means if something happened, and then our decision is that. I'm going to show you the details later on. And then the whole idea that is, we would like to implement our knowledge so that we come up with a machine that can perform reasoning. That is, we would like to mimic the human spirit so that the machine intelligence, yeah, that intelligence that is the human intelligence when we talk about fuzzy inference system we have different kind of name for that in the literature say fuzzy logic system fuzzy rule based system fuzzy expert system fuzzy model fuzzy associative memory fuzzy logic controller in the control field as well as simply fuzzy system yeah they refer to a very similar thing so just to give a summary, what I just mentioned, that is a fuzzy inference system, that is an intelligent system. It demonstrates the capability to compute with word. That means we are going to use the membership function to represent the word in the if-then format. Based on the if-then format, we are going to develop some sort of human knowledge. And then so based on this human knowledge, we are going to do the reasoning based on the input, we are going to deduce what kind of output it would be. Uh, now, for the inference system in the literature, basically we have four components. We call this is the fuzzifier knowledge base, uh, fuzzy inference engine, the fuzzifier connected in this way. Yeah. So inside this box, that is these four components, the Outside that, we accept the input. This input, although I mentioned that is a quips, quips, that means, for example, that is a numer numerical value, and then uh, it generates a quips output, a numerical output as well. But uh, in general, the input can be fuzzy input, the output can be, can be fuzzy output. So you can see that we have some in the connection right here. This knowledge base that is in if then format, it provides the expert knowledge right here to support the fuzzy inference, uh, uh, fuzzy reasoning. And then so I'm going to give you some details about that, how it works. Okay, stick to this example. This example that is we are going to drive a car and we want to get, keep a safe distance. Yeah, so that means right here, this term, what does it mean by safe? And then so that is a fuzzy term and then so it contains of uncertain information that means different people will have different understanding on that different culture and then so different regulation we will have different definition for safe uh, distance uh, now assume that i'm driving the blue car and then i would like to keep a good distance a safe distance right here and then so this these are the rules i'm going to use in if then format rule one if the distance right here that is small, I would like to keep the speed no, so that I'm going to, for example, I'm going to de accelerate so that to bring the distance larger compared with the fun car. And now, if the distance is medium, okay, so I'm in the middle, for example, this distance is medium, and then I'm going to keep the speed steady because I would like to maintain this distance. But what about if the distance that is large uh, now for example in this case the distance is large compared with the fun car i would like to increase the speed yeah so that uh, i'm going to bring the distance closer to the fun car and then so uh, so i just make use of these three rules in order to do this task that is one thing um, that is the rule base of the fuzzy inference system uh, so Different people will have different number of rules. We can just refine this small. Maybe we can have the distance is very small. If the distance is very, very small, we have different action. Yeah. So it is up to us to define this linguistic rules and the number of it. Yeah. Okay. And now take a closer look at this example. And then so when we talk about these rules, Small, 
medium, large. That is the knowledge according to us. So we need to define what it means by small, medium and large. We use the membership function as what we have uh, mentioned before. So this is I how I define the distance. Distance, that is the distance between my car and the front car. So I just define that from zero meter to four meter, four meters. And then so this wet line, that is the membership function in between zero to four, we will have um, the y axis, that is the, the grade, the membership grade, that is how much it belongs to small. The same to medium and large. We have the green line, the trapezoid, the blue line represent the large. Yeah. So I just consider from zero to ten meter. Yeah. And now low the speed is low, steady, high. We have something similar. And then so, so this is the output membership function, the x axis, that is the speed right here. And then so for example, low that is light in red. I use the Gaussian function to represent that. That is, when the speed, I just normalize that to zero to one. Okay, so that means it represents a certain range of the speed. Yeah, but anyway, now that is in zero to one. Say, no, that is from zero to zero point five, and then because after zero point five, it is very close to zero. Yeah, so the green line it cover the whole range, and then so according to different speeds, it will give you different value of the, of uh, the membership way and then the same for high as well so three rules and then each rule we only have one variable distance and then we have one fuzzy z and I put all the fuzzy z in one figure for the input membership function the same I put all the membership functions in one figure for the output membership function and now the problem is we are going to use the fuzzy inference system to get this task done. That means I would like to replace this human using a robot, for example. And then so now, but before we are going to do to do that, that means before we are going to use the fuzzy inference system to replace, uh, to, to act as a driver, we are going to understand how do we do this in our daily life. First, when I'm sitting in the car, I'm I'm, I'm using my eyes to estimate the distance between my car, the distance between the front car and my car. If we are going to make, collect more information, we can collect the distance between the back car as well. Yeah, the car at the back. So now I collect this information and then to pass this information into my brain and then my brain process this information according to my knowledge to the driving experience and then generate the signal to my limbs that is hand and legs to control the car that is the thing we are going to do yeah now if i'm going to say replace our brain using this fuzzy inference system so i would exactly do the same using a sensor for example to estimate the distance right here and then so say now the input that is 3.5 meter and then what i'm going to do is to pass this information into the fuzzy fire the fuzzy fire is doing the thing that is to translate this number into the fuzzy input for the fuzzy inference engine that is this information in the previous slide, I defined small, medium, large for the distance right here. And assume that this is 3.5 and then I draw a line right here just to calculate the um, um, the membership function corresponding to small, medium and large so that I'm going to evaluate the contribution made by each rule. For example, right here, the width, the distance is small, that is 0 0.25 it means that that is 25 percent belong to small and then now this point that is 0 0.8333 so 83 percent belong to medium when we talk about the large right here this point that is zero it means that it is definitely it is not large the distance so we are going to pass this information into the knowledge base that means we just process this information right here to check 
how small is the distance, how medium is the distance, how large is the distance, and given by this value. So based on this value, in the first inference engine, we can do a kind, we can do some reasoning. That is, level of distance according to 3.5 meter, and that, uh, that is 0 0.25 of small, 0 0.83 of medium, 0 for large. So according to this rule base, we it suggests that the speed should not be very low, and that. Uh, because it is more to work medium, it suggests that the speed is steady. So it is more to work steady, and that uh, because distance is large, that is zero percent of large. So it just uh, suggests that whether that speed is high or not, it just tells you that definitely we do not drive the car in high speed. Yeah. Okay. And now, according to this reasoning right here, we generate the fuzzy output. This fuzzy output, for example, we in works in language, we can just simply say that speed should not be very low. Coming up from the first rule, more to work steady. Coming from the second rule, and then definitely lot high. And then so this fuzzy output, we have to pass it into the diversifier so that the diversifier is going to translate this fuzzy output into a crisp value, a number, a numerical value, so that the actuator can take the action. For example, my hands, my necks, and then so say, for example, it generates output that is 20 miles per hour, for example. Okay, so how do we implement that? And then so we are going to have some this diagram or this um, diagram can help you to understand better about the details. So consider the same problem that is we have three rules. Yeah, so we have three rules. And then remember that uh, we have these three membership functions for distance, small, medium and large. That is the that is the membership function for low, steady and high. And now I'm going to draw this diagram rule by rule. Rule one distance is small. So I put the wet trapezoid right here so to represent that if the distance is small okay then the speed is low this membership function that is this membership function right here to represent that the speed is no and that this is the rule two so distance is medium so i put the trapezoid right here and then the green gaussian shape right here to represent that the speed is steady and the same for the root three, yeah. Now, now this one. That is the output member. Uh, th this diagram, that is uh, something in this column. So because I put a diagram right here to demonstrate how do we aggregate the output right here. This is this diagram just to show the fuzzy output. Yeah. Okay. So when we have the input, we are going to do the rule evaluation to evaluate how much contribution each rule to the system so that uh, we are going to generate the output. Let's take a look at this numerical example. Assume that uh, we have the input that is 3.5 meter. So I draw a vertical line right here to cut across the small, medium, and large membership function in each rule. So we come up with the intercept, intercept right here, so that it just tells you how much it belongs to small, medium, and large, and then draw a vertical line. This vertical line will be extended to the output membership function. For example, now extended to right here, we have the intercept. We have the intercept at this point as well as right here so that uh, now rule evaluation that is these three numbers how much it belongs to rule one rule two rule three and then uh, now i'm going to do the rule aggregation so now i'm going to use this horizontal line to cut across this output membership function and highlight 
this region. That means everything lower than this line, everything that is lower than this line, I highlight highlight that in gray and then now I'm going to generate the first output by using the root aggregation it means that I'm going to put all the gray area yeah okay so this one that is coming from this gray area and then the next one put them together that is coming up from this gray area because the third one we do not have any gray area because now we just find out that it is very close to zero so, so that means if you would like to put it here we can still put it put it here as well but actually it is zero and now when we talk about uh, this uh, we put these two gray area together and then so we just use the inference method that is the max mean right here i do not show the mean because uh, this is something to do with the wu evaluation if we have two variables right here and then so we have to apply the minimum or the product to determine how much the contribution each rule it is yeah but anyway we only have one input so we do not need to perform the mean max right here it means that after the rule aggregation we are going to just simply find out the envelope that is finding the maximum value after we combine all these gray area that is the max yeah now right here that is the fuzzy output and then so we pass the whole shape right here into the diversifier to generate the output a numerical value we call this is the diversification so for this gray area in word we can interpret that like this but we understand what it means by human but the machine does not understand that so we have to turn it into a numerical value so diversification that is to turn this aggregated out for the output to quiz output one of the method of the diversification that is using the center of gravity so this is the equation for that. I'm going to talk about this later on. But anyway, this is just to apply this equation so that we come up with the center of gravity based on this position. And then so we look up the x axis, that is the speed, that is the output membership function, the output domain, that is speed. So we come up with, for example, this point, it just suggests that the Crips output, the speed now should be 4.5 if the input that is 3.5 meters. I'm going to talk about the diversification process in the fuzzy inference system. And just to recall that we have a diversifier right here as well as the fuzzy output the fuzzy output for example that is something we collect the output membership function the aggregated membership function for example in this particular form yeah so because according to different input we will have different shape at, as the aggregated membership function so that is the fuzzy output we have this shape how do we turn this shape into a numerical value that is the diversification i'm going to introduce five methods the first one that is the centroid method or we call this is the center of gravity another one by sector and then small of maximum um smallest of maximum largest of maximum as well as the middle of maximum okay and now this is the um the membership function we have and then so because we need to know once we have this membership function when we apply the center of gravity we need to know the equation of this membership function so i just uh, do it previously so this line so the whole shape and i'm going to break it down into segment according to this piecewise linear linear function so this uh, this line that is 0 0.3 z z that is the x axis yeah so the mu z that is the y axis right here yeah so this line that is mu z that is 0 0.3 and then so corresponding to each segment we can find a linear function yeah okay and now this is the 
center of gravity. The center of gravity, we have the continuous form as well as the discrete form. Continuous form, it takes more time. It, it, it is more computational expensive for this discrete form. And then we describe, discretize the membership function so that make easy about the, uh, the calculation. But anyway, take a look at how do we apply this equation. The lower part, that is mu z dz during the integration, it means that we are going to have this function, the whole function right here, that is mu z. So that means we just simply, this one, that is just to find out the area under the curve. Yeah. Okay. And now take a look at this bit. Mu z, z times z, that is z, that is the x axis right here that is our output so because we cannot we, it is not easy for us to do um the integration of this shape so according to calculus we just simply break it down into segment from zero to one okay from zero to one the equation right here that is 0 0.3 z and then times z right here so this one that is mu z this set that is coming up from here. So this is the first segment. And then so for the green one, that is from 1 to 3.6. From 1 to 3.6, we are talking about this green segment. 0 0.3, that is this equation. Z, that is this guy, dz, and so on. So um, we applied the same logic for all the segments. So we come up with the numerator, the denominator, that is exactly the same, except that we do not include this set. So do the calculation, 4.95, and then so now this is the discrete form. The discrete form, that is, although maybe we obtain a continuous form, we just simply discretize that. For example, I'm going to use the discretization of interval of one. So that means I'm going to do the samples a zero, one, two, and so on. So we only focus on this purple or magenta line. So that means the shape will look like something like this. Yeah. So you ignore the envelope right here, something like this. And now the equation, instead of doing integration, we are going to do summation. Look at the numerator, mu z i. So that i, that is the i that is running from zero to certain number. Z i means that, for example, I call this is uh, z zero. This is z one. Z zero. That is a zero. Z one. That is one. That is the descript value at the x uh, at, at the x axis denoted by z. Okay. So mu z that is this value. Yeah. So for example, mu z one. That is 0 0.3 according to this example. So take a look at this one. Z0, that is this point, is mu value, that is 0. Yeah, so this is mu Z0, this is Z0, that is this point, x and y value. And then 0 0.3, that is this value. Yeah, so this is mu Z1. And then 1 right here it is because of in the x axis this z z1 value that is one and then 0 0.3 again that is this point in the y value that is mu z yeah and then two that is this mu that is z2 and so on in the numerator that is sum of all this mu value that is all this corner point sum up of all this corner point will be this value it just give you this half after calculation it give you 4.94 yeah so it is very close to this one for this example that means if you're going to have more samples right here and then the, the results would be closer to um, the continuous form and now by sector that is when we consider the same aggregate membership function d idea that is we are going to find the vertical line yeah 
which divide the output membership function into half so that we are going to have these to the area. So the air, the subregion of these two half of equal size, for example, if we I'm going to choose the output, the diversified value that is six, and then I'm going to calculate this subregion. Yeah, they have more or less the same size, and then I'm going to choose six as the output. Yeah, because for this one I just discretize the membership function at the interval of one. So the difference between two samples, it is one. So that I'm going to choose zero, one, two, three, so that up to until I reach six, I just find out that these two sub region, the area is more or less the same. Yeah. Okay. So the divers the diversified output when we use the bisector method, that is six in this example. And now we're talking about another three, yeah, smallest of maximum. When we talk about the same membership function, that is, we are going to identify the mu z that is the largest. That means I'm talking about the y value. I just find out that in this region, it gives you the maximum value of membership gray, yeah. So what I'm going to do is just to find out the smallest value at the x-axis, that is the set value, that is this point. Because when I locate this point, this is the smallest value at the x-axis. And then this just gives you 6. So when we apply the smallest of maximum, Zsom, that is 6. And then now when we talk about the largest of maximum, we are going to do the same thing that is to identify the large um, when we have the largest value of mu and then in this range we are going to pick the largest x value so it just give you seven because we are looking for this point yeah the x value that is the largest and then the middle of them that is to identify som lom take the average that is the middle one for this example, we just find out that this is the centroid using the centroid method after the diversification, that is this point. And then when we do SOM, when we do MOM, LOM by sector, we have different value after after diversification. Yeah. So which one is the best? And then uh, I think it depends on the application as well as the computational power of your machine. Yeah. Okay, so take a look at this fuzzy inference system that is about an application that is for fuzzy control of mobile robot. Now this is the mobile robot. Uh, we consider a two-wheeled mobile robot as a picture. So right here we have two wheels on both sides. Yeah, so one wheel, one side. So our objective that is to design a fuzzy inference system or a fuzzy controller in this form so that uh, we are able to issue the control command to both wheels so that drive this mobile robot from this point to the target point yeah using the information of the error distance de as well as the error angle theta e right here so the error distance that is the distance between the target point and the source point that is the position of the robot and the error angle, that is the difference between the heading angle as well as the angle toward the target point. Yeah. Okay. And now the idea that is, we have an FIS, a fuzzy inference system, which will take the input of D, E, and theta E as the input, and then it generate the control output. The control output will be the voltage applied to both wheel. If they receive both the same signal in both wheel, the mobile robot will move straight forward. Uh, if we have some differential voltage value, and then the robot will rotate. Yeah. So we are going to come up with this configuration, a feedback control system, and then so this inform the output information DED uh, the 
error distance and error angle will be used to adjust uh, or to control the position of the robot. And now take a look at this knowledge base. In the knowledge base, we are going to have a number of rules. The rules that is, if the error distance d e that is small and the error angle theta e that is small, we are going to produce a translational force that is small as well as the rotational force that is small. The translational force that means we apply the same voltage into two wheels so that the robot will move straight forward. The rotational force that is the um the angle applied in the wheels uh, sorry, I mean the force applied to the wheel in opposite direction so that the robot can rotate. That means when we apply this force Although I mentioned two forces, actually they will put we will add them together so that um, this voltage will apply to the wheel one and wheel two and then to control the robot so that it will move straight forward simultaneously. It will rotate to adjust the heading angle so that the robot will move from its own position to the target point. And when the rule, okay. So when the error distance is medium and the error angle is medium, so that both forces will be medium. So that because the error distance and error angle are medium, we need to have um, a larger force than this case. So that so we are going to provide sufficiently large force so that the robot will go to the target point as soon as possible. Yeah. Now. now if the error distance is large, error angle is large, both for both force will be large. And then in between we have different combination. Error distance is small, for example, error angle is medium, and then so we have different combination for translational force and rotational force. We have to compute this rule base right here so that to make it work. Yeah. And note that although I use small for distance and for angle, they refer to different things in different contexts. That is something like when I say that the bottle is small and then it is different, uh, that small is different from the room is small, Yeah, the scale is, is different. So we have to define this small in the distance uh, context. This is small that is for angle with different membership functions. But now take a look at um, this Result. This result that is the fuzzy control of mobile robot that is mainly for position control. Compare with the P controller with the fuzzy P controller, you will just see the result is like this. And then so now the source point that is at this corner, and you will see that so we start from this point, apply the control signal very quick in the beginning, but so when we get close to the target point the speed becomes very low. It is because that uh, when we use one single linear controller and that uh, we cannot consider all scenarios in terms of error distance and error angle. Uh, take a look at this one. That is the fuzzy P controller and then to start from the same point and then we reach the target very quick in the beginning, very quick in the middle, very quick at the end. Yeah, It is because that we derive the working space into subspace and then so we consider the error distance, error angle in different subspace, medium, small, large. Yeah. So that different scenario we apply different control policy so that so we come up with a better control performance. And now on top of the fuzzy control and that so we can also use the fuzzy controller to do different things. For example, combine the fuzzy control with the obstacle obstacle avoidance algorithm. So we have a robot right here, target point, three obstacles, so that the robot is able to follow the panned path to avoid the obstacle and reach the target position like this. And we can also use that, use the fuzzy inference system to implement the game strategy. So this is the game strategy. One team, we use fuzzy logic controller as well as the use fuzzy inference system to implement the game strategy. And energy team, we use naive algorithm. And then you can see the result. One team, it is more aggressive. And then that one, that team that is using the fuzzy logic. Yeah.